when you're making love to a woman, okay, and I'm assuming you have, <laughs> right, during the act of lovemaking, there is almost always a time when the lady will shut her face. Uh, not her face. So <laughs> shut her face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't done it that much either. <laughs> Shut your face, I'm working here. No, no it's not like that. There's a, there's a stage when you're making love to a woman where they stop talking. Tell us no. more, Jonathan. No. There's a stage when you're making love to a woman. It feels like two 14 year old boys talking about girls they don't really know. Yeah. I've heard it's like a makeshift hand. Well, I was told, I was told, I was told to practice cunnilingus by putting your tongue in an orange. Oh my God, she needs to see a gynecologist and quickly. That was a man who told me, a tramp. A tramp told you that. <laughs> Just shouted randomly. Go on, when, you, when you're making love to a woman, they close their eyes. That's what we've got when to. You, when you're making love to a woman, there will be a time when they close their eyes and keep them shut for quite a while. Now, I'm curious as to whether you think that is because you have transported them to a wonderland of pleasure. So great, so intense, they can't bear reality. It can't coexist with this incredible pleasure. It's like I'm riding on a rainbow, for Christ's sake. I don't want to look out and see tomorrow's washing. I'm loving this. I'm loving what you're doing to me. This is unbelievable. And you know what? It's the sensory what... overload. I can't take in touch and sound as well. I'm just enjoying white soul. <laughs> is that what's going on? Or are they thinking, look at his big, fat, ugly f***ing face. Because <laughs> when I'm above now, I'm quite old. Look, look at this. Imagine me bearing down on that. Look, see that's what's going? Look at that. It's like a bulldog. <laughs> and I'm bad enough. Imagine what David Dickinson's like. Do you... A, I feel like I'm being groomed. <laughs> B, this is the kind of conversation that internet chat rooms were built for. <laughs> See, yeah, I, I, I do actually agree. I think women close their eyes because of the happy face. The because, happy face? Well, men, at the end of sex, on the vinegar stroke, shall we say, just as you're about to arrive, you tend to have a, a happy face. Men, women, when they orgasm, look beautiful and serene. I've seen it in magazines and films. <laughs> but, but men... And they just... Men, when they, they orgasm... Just go, oh. <laughs> the, the man tends to look like, like he's drinking vinegar through his eyes. Can we have an example of this? Oh, kind of, oh. that kind of, it, I think men generally, when they Do come... Do that again, will you? They look like a turtle shitting. <laughs> hey, hello. Let's deal with this. Can we deal with something? Yeah, Can sure. we deal with an adult theme here? Can we, uh, do, you, do you mind this? Uh, when you're away from home, you're away from your partner, okay, you're on tour, a man has wants, a man has needs. You're in a strange town. Okay? <laughs> what do you do for that? What do, you, do you have uh, comedy fans who make themselves available to you or do you employ <laughs> someone to come to your room? And what, do, what do you do, Jimmy Carr? To, to, to take care of my sexual urges. Yeah. I phone your mum. <laughs> Always, you always do great jokes, which I like. You come prepared. I'm finding your boots a little bit uh, disturbing. To What's the matter with my boots? Because they're like a lady's boots. Show that other one to the. Like, take What's one down. Look at this. It's got a kind of a V on the top, and there. These are the sort of boots that uh, Kim Cattrall would wear on Sex and the City. What? Yeah, I bought them off her. I, I must. Have. <laughs> Yeah, well, right, it's just a pair of boots. And once again, you're wearing jeans in a way which is unconvincing. How? What, how am I wearing jeans in an unconvincing way? You're just because you normally dress as Willy Wonka. <laughs> why are you... Why are you having a go at me? You look like a vicar trying to dress casual to impress the teenagers. <laughs> I, I, I object to that. I think I look like an undercover cop at Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you're there kind of telling jokes and I was very kind of uptight. And so I'm trying to kind of loosen up a bit on stage. Because I've noticed your voice when you speak on stage is different to the way you speak. When you, you, you speak, it's almost like uh, when I was growing up, uh, my, my parents had a phone voice sometimes you'd hear. My mum in particular, when she's talking around the house, she'd be talking normally. And all the face would go, oh, hello. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you could send it over to Lipton Studio. It's still lovely. It's like, what the f Who are you talking to? The I've Pope? Got, I've got a phone voice, but mine's quite breathy. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like, I like the phone sex lines because they're the only place in the world where premature ejaculation is an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I once came in under 75 pence. <laughs> Can't say fairer than that. OK, anyway, um, <laughs> we were talking about my mum, right? We <laughs> and you that's immediately who, leapt to a phone was... sex line. In there and you're all laughing together and, and at my gigs, obviously, you, you get lots of heckles, you get lots of people joining in. And, and what, what kind of heckles uh, do you normally encounter? My favourite are the weird, like... 
not going to heckle. That was like a, 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 either a, a sneeze or a death rattle. I'm not sure. <laughs> The effect I have on the ladies. Oh, someone's just gone. My favourite heckle recently was just, I like weird ones. I had one in, in uh, I was in Cardiff doing a show, the Millennium Theatre, beautiful room. Yeah. And someone just down the front went, Dragon? <laughs> what? Sorry? Dragon? <laughs> what? He went, I'd like a joke about a dragon, please. <laughs> so then, like, and it was just before the interval. So then in the interval, I had to sit and write a joke about a dragon. So you can do that. You can sit down if someone well, gets the subject. Yeah, it's not okay, what was the what was the dragon it's joke? Not a great joke. Well, you let's have like it anyway because <laughs> it's right, a nice two, moment. Two dragons walk into a pub. One says to the other, "It's hot in here." The other one says, "Shut your mouth." I could see you with a monocle. You'd look a bit like a ventriloquist doll. If you had a Come and sit on my knee for a minute here. Come and sit. Come and sit on my knee. No, I'm not being groomed. I'm not grooming you. I just want to see if we do look like a, a traditional ventriloquist act. Right. Have a look at sitting on your neck. Oh. Okay. Look at this. You've got bony legs, man. That's not my leg. Now. <laughs> hey, look, man, you go look. We, we live in that magic moment. <laughs> Get off my knee, please. I like Let's just do it like Get this. Get off my knee. I'm getting an erection. Get off my knee. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a very warm anus. I don't know if you've been told that. <laughs> It's reminding uh, me of my dog, Mr. Pickle. It's got this big, exact same texture to it. You've got a very warm anus. <laughs> Have you ever interviewed anyone before? Surely that's not a leading... I've said that to many of the top celebrities, both male and female, and it always goes down well. <laughs> that's how you got the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, get, let's see if we can get this sexy person. Let's do that. Is this... Isn't that better? Don't you think that's a bit better, ladies and gentlemen? This is bullying. Take this off. Take this jacket off. Take off the jacket. Keep oh, your right. microphone. Take your shoes and socks off. <laughs> Take my shoes and socks off. Why would I? Roll up the sleeve. Let's see if we can look a bit casual. Why would? Come on, just take your sit down. Take these shoes off. Come on. I take my shoes and. <laughs> what are you doing? Have you got lifts in these? Okay. <laughs> take your socks off. Roll Why up those am I jeans. taking my shoes? To look more relaxed, more kind of. Ca let's go. Ooh, let's get a bit funky. Doesn't it look better now? Yeah. Roll them up. Roll them up. Roll them up. Roll, Roll up my jeans. Roll up your jeans. How is this in Look any... how much better. Doesn't Jimmy look now much better? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Stay in the Okay. Okay. Untuck, untuck your shirt. Untuck your shirt. Und untuck my shirt. Untuck your shirt. Undo the top button. Open the shirt. Open the shirt. I don't. But there's <laughs> ladies out there. <laughs> I'm also bringing out a diet video. <laughs> that would be so You're looking good. He's looking. Doesn't he look sexy? Yeah. Yes. Can we just have one smouldering sexy look to the camera before we go to it? No. <laughs> what? What? Do you like touring? Though I guess it must be quite a solitary thing because you're away a lot, aren't you? I mean, you really are. You're working. What, four or five nights of the week you're on stage? Yeah, maybe five, six, yeah. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. And most of those, you know, you're out of London. You're travelling away from your home. I love it? it. OK, how do you occupy your time? If you can at all keep that vaguely clean, that would be appreciated. But what do you do uh, before the show, immediately and afterwards? Well, you sort of, you, I mean, you meet people after the show. Or, uh, you know, and you tend to meet people before. Do you have well, a like wander around town and get swingers, coffee? Swingers, clubs, that kind of thing? <laughs> Not that kind. It's not one of your weird fantasies now. <laughs> So, what you, so you meet the, uh, the audience after the show? Always meet the audience after the show and say hello. Just because I, I, I'm a big comedy fan. Before I was a comedy performer, I used to go and see a lot of comedy shows. And, and if you ever get to meet the performer afterwards, and just even just saying hello, it sort of makes all the difference. Just to sort of, it makes you feel like more of a night out, I think. Uh, it's nice. And when you're interacting with people, I'm sure, I'm sure people have enjoyed the show, but do other people say to you, you know, I didn't like that joke or that bit didn't work? Do they give you feedback in that way? And how do you deal with it if they do? Uh, they give me an awful lot of feedback. It tends to be the people that come to my shows aren't offended. And, and primarily they're not offended because that's what they came for, yeah. those kind of jokes. So they're not going to say, I wish you hadn't done that kind of material, obviously, or they wouldn't be there. Yeah, but you get a lot of sort of positive feedback on that was a good gig or that was a funny thing you did. I mean, a lot through Twitter these days, I'm obsessed by this sort of Twitter thing. And the idea that you can sort of have a direct conversation with people that come to see your shows, it's brilliant. You like being able to directly communicate, there's no kind of uh, there's, there's, no, there's no kind of middleman, people can just get in touch straight away. Does Jimmy, uh, Jimmy always strikes me as this, and I hope he does you as well, as a very kind of optimistic, very upbeat. Uh, you seem grateful for what you've got, you seem to be in a good mood most of the time. Uh, I, I realise I'm captain of the lucky club. Yeah. So you feel, you feel blessed in that respect? Yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, but do you get grumpy other things that annoy you? Because once again, a lot of comedians use that as their stocking trade. They go on stage and they use the kind of grumpy old man thing. They, uh, you know, and some of them genuinely are quite grumpy. Like Jack like... D, I think he's genuinely grumpy most of <laughs> yeah. the time. 
Uh, Stuart Lee seems that way. Are you at all? I, do don't, you have get, those I don't get grumpy, but I, the little things in life sometimes irritate me. You know, when I'm, I'm travelling around, I spend a lot of time on the road driving. Yeah. When it says McDonald's restaurant, and you think, it's not a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, we all know what McDonald's is, there's no need to put restaurant. <laughs> How annoyed would your Jane be if on your next anniversary you went, yeah, I booked a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to the maitre d', Ronald, I think his name was. <laughs> I booked us a table for two, he recommends the filio fish. <laughs> When you, when you do a joker and it gets, you know, an equal measure of laughs and gasps, is My that a My favourite noise in the, at a comedy gig, and there's a few jokes in the current show that I'm touring that get this reaction, is it's a laugh followed by a gasp. Because you don't think about what you laugh at. Like when people just laughed at those jokes, they, they didn't think about, oh, shall I laugh at that or not? They laugh, it's a reflex action, yeah. and, then, and then their sort of socialisation kicks in and they go, oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that. And that's my favourite thing, to kind of trick people into kind of their, their kind of baser motives. Do you get heckled, though? Do you get people in the audience who, uh, I don't know whether people come along, I remember when I used to go to comedy clubs many years ago, you used to get some people in the audience who you, you could sense had gone along because they wanted to heckle. They had yeah. heckles ready, they enjoyed it. Or, or do you encounter that, and, or indeed do you encounter people who just don't like something you said on stage and feel they should, should No, you know? I, I don't get uh, heckled in the same way I used to in the clubs. There's a big difference between if you go to a live show and you've, you haven't paid 20 quid to come and see someone by accident, yeah. it's like you want to go and see them. So they know your material, so, they know what you're going to do. They, and they like to join in and it's a different sort of thing when people are joining in. And my audiences are really funny. They often shout out really funny stuff. Yeah. But, you know, being heckled in clubs is a different thing and that's sometimes it's just impossible to come back from. I've got a friend that was heckled. He was doing a support slot for someone. Okay, so the support act is going out there to nothing because yeah, the audience of. are paid to see the headliner and this guy's just doing 20 minutes at the top. And he was getting nothing from the audience. He's a really funny comic. He's a great guy. And he was getting nothing from the audience. And someone shouted right from the back, loudly and clearly, when a punchline fell on dead air, you're ruining our evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. You can't come back from that. Another one that I heard was... <laughs> A friend of mine did a gig in, this was in Edinburgh, you know, at the yeah. festival, to a tiny yeah. little room of like 30 people. Yeah. And God love, he's a funny guy, but yeah. it was late at night and everyone was too drunk and they were a bit tired, a hot room, nothing. Okay, so he's there and he's, he's like, he's going through the set and he's getting nothing. And some guy just whispers to his friend, but like at the perfect moment, you know, when there's total silence and the guy whispers, he just turned to his friend and went, there used to be a pool table in here. <laughs> The program for Jimmy's tour at the moment, which is uh, Jimmy Claw Wipe Your Weird. When there's some, a lot of work's going to this, a lot of photographs, a lot of funny ideas, but also there's a cut out and keep Jimmy so you can dress Jimmy, you see? So you can dress your own Jimmy. <laughs> um, but we had, a, we've got another one of the program, the special, the early edition of the program, which I think they stopped making due to complaints, which was the, the <sighs> cut out, that, that cut out and dress Jimmy. I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Want to keep that? <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, it's great to have you back on the show. Mr. Jimmy Carr, ladies and gentlemen. Always, always a pleasure. Jimmy Carr. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. P probably, probably it filters through some sort of advert that you watched before you watched the video, maybe? Or maybe you subscribed? Anyway, thanks for watching it. And somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see you at a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.